A new study shows a historic rise in binge drinking, marijuana use, and consumption of hallucinogens. But we're not talking about teens, we're talking about middle-aged adults. Dr. Scott Hanlon is Chief of Young Adult and Adolescent Medicine at Mass General for Children. Thank you so much for being with us this afternoon, Doctor. Thanks for having me. Let's talk about this new data. It's part of a study by the University of Michigan. Does it surprise you that this age group would see this type of increase? Yeah, Jennifer, there are parts of this that are really surprising and alarming. You know, I think the take home here is that the generation of parents and adults between the ages of 35 and 50, you know, people of my age range actually have substance use rates that are really approaching that of young people. You know, this study found that one in four adults had recently used cannabis. I wasn't perhaps as surprised by this. We know that attitudes around cannabis are changing. It's becoming more available with legalization. But one in three adults had reported binge drinking, meaning that they had had five or more drinks in one occasion recently. And this was surprising to me because, you know, these same data tell us that adults understand the potential health harms of doing this. You know, on the last point, um, there was a rise in hallucinogen use as well. This remains relatively low, you know, use of substances like psilocybin and ketamine, but it's something that we'll keep an eye on in the years to come. Well, the data also showed a historic rise in vaping among young adults under 30. How concerning is that and, and that it's still such an issue out there, given all we know about it now? And how do we talk to our kids about it? Yeah, you know, it's really concerning. This is what I do in my practice is I care for young adults who are struggling with nicotine or cannabis that they may be vaping. And this study showed that across the U.S. in 2022, one in five young adults in this age range reported that they had vaped either nicotine or cannabis. You know, on the one hand, I find that a lot of young people understand that vaping is, you know, compared to smoking something where you're putting smoke in your lungs, it is relatively safer in terms of exposing the body to fewer carcinogens. But on the other hand, we don't yet know the long-term effects of using vapes and e-cigarettes um, for years on end. And we also find in our clinical practice that when young people are vaping, they're often taking concentrations of nicotine or cannabis that are much higher than you would find in a cigarette or in a joint. And so the rates of addiction that we see are quite high. And Dr. Hanlon, we've talked before about how hard it is to separate the substance use issue from the mental health crisis. How can we start this conversation with our kids? Yeah, you know, to be clear, not everybody who uses substances has a problem with them, but we want to try to identify people who, who do. And as you mentioned, you know, there, is, there are these tight links between mental health. When young people are struggling with depression, anxiety, trauma, you know, they may use substances as a, as a way of managing their symptoms. And of course, it's, it's unhealthy and, and potentially dangerous to do so. So what I recommend to parents is that they have an open dialogue with young people. They approach this from a place of concern and also curiosity rather than than accusation and punishment, and they try to avoid escalating the situation. Pick a good time to approach a young person, you know, not on Friday night as they're headed out the door to go see their friends, but instead, you know, maybe Sunday morning when they're more open to a conversation and try to understand the reasons that they use. Tell them that you're worried about them and you just want to try to understand. And remember, too, that doctors like me are here to have these conversations with patients, and we're also here to help connect young people to services for mental health and or addiction when they need them. All right, Dr. Scott Hadlin with Mass General, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it.